Good afternoon, champions, and welcome to the Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms weekly live stream. My name is Dylan. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, first, before we get rolling, I'd like to thank uh, Dungeons & Dragons for hosting us on the official Twitch channel. Uh, it is and will always be an honor to be here, and I would also like to give a huge uh, thanks and shout out to the awesome folks who make this all happen, along with me, uh, Clive and Erica on our end today, and uh, Lauren Obocrazy Urban in, uh, in chat. Uh, you guys are awesome. Okay, so to get this party started, uh, my guest today uh, played Alistair Goldfang on Relics and Rarities, Bag of Nails on Dice Camera Action, Beetle on Force Grey at the Stream of Many Eyes last year, uh, has been an actor in television and film for decades across such shows as Bosch and Twin Peaks, uh, as well as cult classic films like Scream, Hackers, and SLC Punk. Uh, and of course, I would be remiss if I did not also mention that he has been the face and voice of uh, Shaggy Rogers for nearly two decades. Uh, so uh, without further ado, please welcome uh, Matthew Lillard to the stream. Hello! I love the fact that I was introduced first and foremost as Alistair Goldfang. That is hilarious. You like that? I figured... I, uh, I, I, it's funny, I was at um, Gen Con last year and I had people coming up to me left, right, and center talking about like, oh my god, I loved you in insert streaming game here. So it's uh, it's definitely a new experience for me. Well, it, you know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was interesting as a viewer too, because as somebody who uh, watches Dice Camera Action, uh, when you came on as Bag of Nails, I was like, what? Matthew Lillard plays D&D? &D? And then saw you at the Stream of Many Eyes and uh, with the uh, Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse set up right next door to us. Uh, sure. in, 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 in the city of Waterdeep. Uh, and it's just kind of like, oh, and it's just kind of looking around. I'm like, oh, everybody plays D&D. &D. This is great. <laughs> so yeah, it's very no, cool. not everybody, only the privileged and loved. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, what's that like for you getting to uh, invited to these these different shows? Well, you know, I mean, look, it's, um, I mean, for me, it's awesome because I've, you know, I've been playing since I was a kid and to be honest, before, like I'd say like three years ago, I didn't know that it was such a huge deal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the idea, I mean, I didn't know what Critical Role was three years ago. Even though I played Dungeons and Dragons my whole life, you know, I'm an older sort of, I'm an older demographic. And the idea of Critical Role or the idea of streaming a game, the whole concept that people would watch a game live on Twitch um, was, be, it just didn't, it, wasn't even in my sort of, in my lexicon. I mean, it wasn't even something I ever thought about. So the whole idea of it is brand new and it's been super exciting to sort of figure out um, that world and how it relates directly to our company. Obviously I've started, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but I've started mm -hmm. at the Dragon's Company and you know, how that those two things uh, intertwine is pretty crazy. So what are we watching right now? Are we watching people playing? Or are we watching, uh, are you playing right now as we talk? Like, what is this? I am idling right now. This is uh, a, a formation focused on uh, our latest addition to the game, uh, the Black Viper, uh, who uh, maybe you caught it at uh, the Stream Many Eyes. Viva Vibka was playing her uh, on, on set. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, let's just highlight her now. And so I just kind of set up a formation to just kind of keep that rolling in the background. And they're at area 258 and just- uh, how many areas? Off. How many uh, areas are there? Until you cannot beat the monsters, it's infinite. They are in their own sort of time loop of uh, an adventure that spans so What happens if they get areas. in trouble? I mean, so you're, you're, as you're going through these streets, I mean, I'm sure nobody gives two shits about me talking about the game that they play all the time, but as you're going <laughs> Like, what? I mean, what happened? Where's the drama? It looks like they just keep kicking their rat's ass. Uh, at this point, they do. Yeah, they are uh, grossly overpowered uh, for this water deep adventure. I mean, that's what happens when you have nine characters or ten characters in a party instead of just a, a, a small group of three or four. Um, mm -hmm. And so the the like the gameplay kind of revolves around you go into adventures and you just you push your limit as far as you can every time. And like you earn favor from different deities depending on which adventures you're doing, uh, which translates into like more gold and more loot and more equipment for your characters. Uh, you know, it just kind of scales forever, pretty much. This doesn't look fun. You're killing things too easily. You need a dragon <laughs> or some kind of 
Well, hold on. I mean, you need something more aggressive. More, yeah. It'll, it'll be a while before these characters, because they're so strong, it'll be a while before they hit a boss that uh, really challenges them. Um, although, it, when we make the bosses too challenging, which happens every once in a while, maybe, uh, players are like, oh, this boss is too hard. <laughs> so, you know, like, F you, uh, when we first introduced, uh, spoilers for Tomb of Annihilation, people, uh, but when we first uh, introduced uh, Serac and the... Along with the the Soulmonger and the uh, Atropol in the game, it was brutally difficult to get through, <laughs> as it should be. Good. It um, should be. Yeah. No fun if it's not if it's not hard. It's no fun. Yeah, yeah. And so they. Uh, this does not look fun. This looks like <laughs> oh, this looks completely. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna take a while before they meet a part where, point where they're at a challenge. This is early in the adventure at this point. Area two two sixty or whatever it is, yeah. When do we do a beetle character? Don't we? Should we do a beetle character? Would you like to? Yes, of course I want to. Who doesn't want to be? Who doesn't want to be immortalized in a video game? Please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can make that happen. Let's let's do it. Yeah, that would be fun. We could do something with uh with Beetle and Grimms around it. Actually, yeah. 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 Guys, back to people. I can't announce that right now. I was about to announce something. I'm not in a position to announce at all. Oh yeah, no. Uh, uh, no uh, uh, NDA information. No, yeah, no, no spoiler. No spoilers to the general community. Twitch. And yeah, you. yeah. There's actually a because um, uh, uh, Lauren's in chat and uh, she was at the stream many eyes and we had this funny moment where uh, I was standing there with Lauren and with uh, uh, James Hake from D and D Beyond. Yeah. And maybe another person or two, and we all kind of realized like, wait, we're all under the same NDA and we can actually talk about this now. <laughs> Oh, that's and we fun. started had that moment where like we could talk about this thing that none of us are allowed to talk about, and it was it was a lot of fun. So that's fine. Now, have, do you know what's coming up next? Are you in uh, the know? I um, as a as a digital licensee of Dungeons and Dragons, we are uh, familiar with content months out that's coming up. So uh, oh, that's fun. Isn't yeah. it fun? It's so cool. It's the coolest it's thing. It's so cool. My, it's gonna be my D and D friends are ridiculously jealous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be um, awesome. But uh, I'm ex I'm very excited both for the Ghost of Salt Marsh and especially for what comes after. Yeah, yeah. What comes after is gonna be mind blowing. Yeah. Salt yeah. Marsh is awesome too, but yeah. Hey, <laughs> pirates and ghosts and uh, you know yeah. like Lovecraftian things from the deep. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm I'm all over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, since you'd already mentioned uh, starting a D and D company, let's talk about that. Like, where does where does the idea for Beetle and Grimm's come from? It's a midlife crisis. I mean, you know, we're a bunch of dudes. I'm 49 years old, and we've been playing together since we were 21. And you know, we were sitting around going, "There's got to be there's got to be more to life than kids and happiness, like pure joy. <laughs> like, like our lives are pretty good. We all have good jobs, and we all have." You know, we're great kids and we're sort of looking for what else to do, you know, and um, we were looking like we, I mean, we talked to I me, mean, I've, I've said this in a bunch of interviews, so I don't want to bore someone, but if they've read it, but, you know, we were looking for something else to do and we were talking about like doing stuff that we love, like building something that we would have mm -hmm. fun doing. We talked mm -hmm. about building a bar around gaming like they have up in Mott's Sporting House in Seattle or do we, you know, we're talking about maybe creating an escape room, like an escape room in a truck would be super fun. That was mobile or, you know, stuff that we like the mystery box company, that idea of like creating a mystery and sending it out was like something we talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then one day my buddy, Bill, who's in the company, he was one of our guys who plays Grimm actually in our old game. I was beetle. Okay. He came and said, I have an incredible, he's like, I have this awesome idea. I can't wait to share with everyone. I want everyone to come over, which is, you know, there's one of those things like before we roll, like, what about this? Or what about that? Or what about this? And order pizza and then we play. Yeah. And he's like, I think everyone should come over. We should hang out and talk about this. And so he pitched it like this. It's a super simple idea. It's like, if you're a, a fan of Pearl Jam, you're going to, you know, you're going to download the album. You're going to buy the new album when it comes out. Now you may be like sort of like that next level fan that also wants the vinyl to complete your collection. And that's like the next level of fan. But the ultimate fan of Pearl Jam is going to go out and buy the boxed edition mm -hmm. of that sort of that, that album. And so my boy, so Bill's idea to us was we should create the boxed edition for Dungeons & Dragons. And we spend the next five hours talking about, well, what does that mean? 
you know, and we had all we all grew up with the red box. I mean, we all grew up buying the original box of AD and D yeah. and sort of playing, you know, as kids, like that's how you started playing. And so, you know, it was born out of this idea of like, you know, look, for us, we're all people that you know, we don't have, I mean, we, we have lives and our lives are crazy. We have kids, we're moving, we've got all kinds of stuff. So if, if you gave up what we don't have in time, we as a collective of five grown ass men with jobs have in money. So our thing is like, can you produce a box that will deliver an incredible gaming experience mm -hmm. for, you know, a hundred bucks a guy. And that was, and that's how we built the, uh, and that's how we built the company. This idea of, creating something very bespoke something very like a collector's sort of item and putting a lot of time and energy into creating a, a better game experience for players yeah huh and uh and lo and behold beetle and grims was announced and born i guess was it you probably started it before last year but i my first time i heard anything about it was at the stream of many eyes with the the pandemonium warehouse next door with all the boxes yeah, yeah. So the stream of many eyes so that's the day the day that was june 1st was the day that we launched which the day we signed our papers with wizards and the day that we launched our website was june 1st now the stream the year before um was where we i mean mike Merles and Nathan were the the president of uh, Wizards of the Coast. Were on. There was the first streaming uh, up in Seattle, and they were on the street corner talking about. They were just like off in the corner talking, and I said to my guys because we were all up there at a game that weekend, and um, and I said I'm going to go pitch your idea. And we had been talking about the idea for like a month now, and I'm like I'm just going to go pitch it to them on this on the street corner and see what they say mm -hmm. and um i went over and i was like hey you know we kind of like got to talk to talking for a second and i said hey i have an idea to pitch you and we're gonna bring back together like you know um like a full-on pitched out idea but i'm gonna throw out this idea and tell me what you think and he, nathan his credit was like dude that's awesome definitely bring it back and about two months later, like we took two months and we put together this box around um, Storm Giants. What was it? Uh, Storm, Storm King Thunder, I think it was. Was that Storm it? Storm Giants Keep? Storm. Yeah, they they done like a little uh, Acquisitions Inc. had done like a this this release, and so we took that release and we basically created a prototype, a box edition of that release, and we brought it up and pitched it out. Like, here's what we want to do, and within that, you know, we talked a lot about all these elements that look dnd thrives when the dm is right the better the storytelling the better the game mm -hmm. the more fun people have so our job is to create awesome touches for players but to really give the dm an opportunity to deliver a kick-ass experience mm -hmm. and that was our pitch in the room and they you know they're like yes go do it and you know the next stream was like 10 nine months later and we like jumped into water deep and try you know we, we we turn that out really quickly so it's been pretty crazy yeah that's that's a fast pace for getting something like that off off the ground it was and also like you know we had look the learning curve from like our company runs every night from 9 p.m to 1 a.m like we all have jobs and we all have lives and so for us it was all hands on deck and trying to figure out how to import things from China, where to print in Detroit. How do we get it from Detroit down to our fulfillment house? Like all, like how do we create a Harper's pin? Like who's gonna, you know, the elements, the amount of elements in that box was pretty extraordinary. Yeah. And like the far reaches we went to create those things was, you know, those things we'd never done before. Yeah. So learning curve on that specifically was pretty intense and, um, I have to say, we you know we've gone, we've come a long way since that first box. Seeing how we're need, to, you know, we just launched, we just announced our silver edition, and then um, we have the you know the next box coming up after that. Cool. Yeah. The uh, it's it's an interesting thing to see. So my my boss is probably one of the most hardcore, if not the most hardcore D and D person I've known. Uh, right. His story. One of those people who tells you is like, this is what I was like when I was playing D and D in college, and like he would describe. Um, you know, giving somebody their like wizard 
uh, cross-examination, having like a player who came back to play and treating it as if that character's wizard was going back to university in in their whatever setting and getting cross-examined by their instructors about what they'd learned in the world. And then like they would improv that for like three hours kind of stuff. And oh I was like, gosh. Jesus, man. Um, That's so, a lot. That's intense. So he got... Uh, well, like, he's doing a good job. He found a way to make a profession out of what yeah. he did. Oh, yeah. Kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, he, so he got the... Uh, the 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 box set for um for Waterdeep, and uh, has added dozens and dozens of props to it, uh, oh, just like stuff awesome. he makes. Uh, yeah, he, he bought a large large uh, format printer so he could like make uh, oh. different types of guy. Like yeah, he's he's into it. So uh, yeah, so he's he's very happy. Uh, when you were describing the, the the fan that would get that product, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very Does much. Did he like it? Did he like the box? Yeah, yeah, he tweeted. Uh, uh, he had like the 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 crest, the like the the Waterdeep guard crest. I think it is that's in the in the uh, box. Oh yeah, the uh, badge of the watch. Badge of the watch. That's what it is. Yeah, and he'll like other parts, and then he'll also like regularly uh, either post in the Forgotten Realms uh, Facebook group or uh, on on Twitter like oh, other props he's made. He made all the deeds because he's he's like DMing three different parties through Waterdeep, and so they each own different properties, and so he like made their deeds and like everything. Yeah. It's hardcore, yeah. It's good. Certainly more so than I am. I, uh, I read the books and I take notes in a notebook. <laughs> like it's kind of, yeah. Fool, you noob. Dial, dialed it back, yeah, yeah. Super, super. Uh, not, not as, not as hardcore. No, and, uh, and he's also, you know, he's pretty excited to have more stuff. We got all, we got all this stuff too that we're going to be giving away, actually. Um, uh, got, the whiz kid stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Gale Force Nine sent us this like oh, Hallister's no. lab, oh, uh, and then I'll. And then we've got cases of these these uh, minis. Oh, that's uh, awesome! Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to start giving those away. Um, it is great stuff. Oh yeah, it's great. It's so much fun, and uh, and people are excited for it too. And it's uh, 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 as as somebody who oh saw, saw somebody in chat. Wait, he was Stevo and SLC Punk. Uh, yeah. Uh, Where for, is the chat? Are you watching chat? Yeah, there's a there's a Twitch chat uh, uh, for the D and D oh. Twitch. Um, and somebody's named Skunktimus Prime. Uh, it's like he was Stevo in SLC Punk. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you get recognized for SLC Punk very frequently? All the time. Nice. I would say it's the second most popular thing that people like to shout out. Because I think that I mean, to me, if you're the guy that sort of man or woman that found SLC Punk when it came out, there's a reason why you found it, and mm -hmm. within that reason. Um, you know, there's an emotional sort of reaction to that film for a lot of people. Yeah. And if you see them, they're very happy to share with you how much the movie meant to them. So it's great. Well, I mean, I think it resonated pretty widely too, because I remember that year, uh, Roger Ebert was put it in his top 10 films of the year. Yeah, yeah. It was big. It was really successful. I mean, look, it was a super tiny movie. I mean, we made it for no money and it never really got a big release. And, you know, it was a movie that was found. And if you found that movie, there was a, you know, you held on to that movie. So it was awesome. It's a highlight, one of the highlights of my career. Cool. Uh, what, like as an actor who's been across, you know, you got a pretty wide career at this point in terms of, you know, you're in television and film and you've been on TV shows regularly and voiced cartoons and like where, like, how do you fit in those, those passion projects in, in amongst everything else, like uh, the more, I guess, commercial work? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, it always feels like you're trying to fit stuff in. But the reality is that, you know, even if you do a movie, you're on a movie for two months or, I mean, television's a grind. I mean, television, I just did an episode of a TV show, and I don't know if I can talk about it, but, um, you know, they're doing 22 episodes. And that's, you're like doing 14, 15, 16 hours a day, five days a week for mm -hmm. 10 months. So that is where you actually have to slide something in, but I've never had that job. I mean, I'm on Good Girls right now on NBC and we did 13 episodes mm -hmm. and I had plenty of time off. I'm totally available now for a movie. I mean, you know, the, so the idea of like, how do you slip those things in? I'm a blue collar actor. It's not like I'm working all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking for work all the time. I just so happen to get every now and then I'll get a role that comes through that's like, awesome you know what i mean 
I mean, you think that we're more busy than we actually are. That's that's the truth. Okay, yeah. I mean, if I if you somebody casually glances at an IMDb page, it's like this long list yeah. of credits. It looks For sure. Like and could... like and look, a bunch of that's like Scooby Doo stuff, and a, a lot of like Scooby movies and television episodes, and you know. But that's like one day of work. I mean, that's like a four hour session where you're in there talking like Shaggy, and then you're done. But it's on your IMDb, and it looks like a big deal. But it's one day of work. Mm. Yeah, and I saw Relics and Rarities uh, is is on I, on IMDb too. So oh, is it really? Yeah, they're properly doing yeah. credits and and stuff. I don't know. The streaming is it seems like it's still so new that it doesn't always get counted. I guess no, that's the way sure of putting not. it. But uh, I'm surprised that Relics and Rarities is on there. To be honest, it I, but what, it should what? be. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's you know that was that was. Uh, that was great. That show's great. She's great. Like that was, you know, the that was super fun. It looked fun to watch, uh, you know, like watching the the game, like uh, as it was, yeah. uh, as it, when it was eventually put on, I think YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it looked cool. Uh, I was gonna ask if you're gonna come back to that, but maybe that's a, a spoiler for something. No, no, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I I think that I would love to come back. Oh, it's like my wife keeps calling me. No worries. I'm gonna. Um, I'm texting her. Sorry. Welcome, welcome to my life. Ah, it's all right. It happens. I'm like checking um, my phone. I'm like, oh, oh, oh mute. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I would love to come back. I don't know if the, I don't know. You know, I don't know if the show's coming back. I don't know. I can't imagine that it wouldn't because it was super successful. She's an incredible DM. Yeah. The sort of success that we see right now with everyone at Critical Role I and mean, that whole thing has been bananas. So it's obviously a viable form, a medium for people to consume. Mm -hmm. And she's incredible. And I think the game's incredible. I think this, you know, the people that watched it loved it. So I don't know. My fingers are crossed for her. Yeah. I, 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 I think it'll keep going. It, uh, it was too well done to not continue as far as I right. can tell. She's so good. So, yeah. Um, but that yeah. said, I mean, they have their players. Um, so I don't know if I would be the guy that would come back. Uh, I'd like to. Well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you'll get invited to a critical role or another show. So, well, a critical role is like, that's like saying, maybe you'll get an Academy award. <laughs> critical role is like, I was like, maybe you can be a critical role. I'm like, yes, I would like to be a critical role. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. They full table. They are also busy. They made themselves really busy with that Kickstarter. Oh, but I, I think that they're, look, they're set up for it. I mean, they're, they, I think that they see more than anyone the, the, the success that the brand has and, you know, how much people love them in the community. And it's been really powerful to watch, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I have a list of uh, uh, mostly Shaggy related questions coming in from people who are watching. If you're uh, if you're down to go through a few of these, uh, I don't really know if I have a lot to say. You know, I mean, obviously, I just got replaced. I don't know. Do you know that I, I just got replaced in the feature version of the film? Oh, okay, so yeah. So basically, what happened was that Warner Brothers is doing an animated feature, mm -hmm. animated version of Scooby Doo. And okay. They cast Will um, Forte. Okay. Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I did not get cast. So it's a, um, it was a and, and I found out like it's Saturday morning at five o'clock in the morning. Like I was like up because I was on um, Africa time, and I was like, oh, that's weird. Somebody said I got replaced in this that in this movie. That's so weird. And then I tweeted. Oh, that's funny. I got replaced in the movie that I have now been doing for, you know, 20, almost 20, 17, 18 years. So yeah. um, it's not a good feeling. It completely, I'm not a big fan of cussing, but it effing sucks. And I wish them the best. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Fair Is there enough. another question outside of that? I'm happy to answer. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh one person wants to know if you prefer ghost pirates or pirate ghosts, but I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't either. Next uh, question. Uh, let's see. An escape room with glass walls. I'm not sure what 13, that means either. 13 ghosts. Uh, somebody's asking what kind of shampoo we use. 
that seems random. It seems like a, a very, uh, that's, it's, that's a, <laughs> it's the internet. That's a waste of you on saying, yeah. asking questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, somebody says that they loved you in Scream and The Curve, I think it was called. I don't know yeah. The Curve. The Curve's an old, that's a, like one of the first movies I ever did. Carrie Russell and Michael Vartan. Oh, wow. Super fun. Yeah. With Sundance with it. Super fun. Huh. I'm going to have to look that up after this. It's good. It's little, but it's awesome. Um, uh, one of our uh, regular players would love to know which movie you were the most proud of being a part of. SLC Punk. Because it's me, the whole movie. You know, it's this little movie that for some reason Hollywood does not like to... Um, I haven't been the lead in many movies. I've been a lot of best friends or the guy on the side or whatever. But that was a movie like right after Scream that I was the lead and it did really well. And it's like being, you know, if you're a basketball player, you want to be in that last minute of the game to try to win the game. Yeah. You don't ever want to be the guy on the bench. Very rarely was I in that game to be the lead. So that was one of the examples of me being the lead that. I was super proud of. So for me, that's like one of the. Uh, this guy uh, going by Wear Bison um, says the. Wear Bison? Wear Bison, yeah. It sounds ferocious. Uh, so the boxes look amazing. And if I get my oh. friends together in one house or city, I would probably have bought one by now just in case. Have you thought about adapting the concept of the box set to a virtual box that works for people who do their gaming exclusively through online chat? Yeah, we haven't. That's not really... Look, I definitely think that that's a possibility for like D&D Beyond to crush something like that. But this is not... Like our whole product... Our belief is that... Look, I think that one of the reasons that the game is having such a great renaissance is because people and understand that the the joy of the game is in the fellowship around the table right mm -hmm. the idea of spending time together hanging out rolling dice talking smack like that like being together and telling a collective story that can last for years at a time that fellowship that dynamic is what is great for the game that's what's great for the game for my generation for the guys i play with mm -hmm. so what we do is we are as of right now, I mean, this could always change, but our belief is that we're creating tools in which to collect people together to play the game. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, look, for us, we're all guys that are like near 50 or 50. And, you know, we are building, the thing about that's interesting about us is that we're building a game um, on the way we play. I mean, we're building a company around stuff that we think's badass, that we enjoy doing, that things that we would love to see at our table, the things that the way our DM plays with us. I mean, we, you know, all of our guys DM except for me. So like, you know, we have this collection of guys that are like, this is what we like and this is how we do it. And so our whole business model is about taking things that we think are badass and putting them into a product line. Uh, you know I mean? Yeah, no, I do. It's, I mean, it, well, it's, I think it's right in the, the first, like the announcement video that it's a, it's a luxury item built to reinforce what a, a, the tools that a DM has at their disposal for everybody, everybody who's playing that campaign setting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's, you know, it's but so far, I mean, look, we're a new company and we've learned a lot in the first year and the first box. I mean, we just, I mean, the amount of the learning curve on the first box was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, we basically already put together, I mean, Salt Marsh, uh, we announced that, you know, three days after they announced, we announced what we have in our box. Mm -hmm. You're free to check it out at beetleandgrims.com. And then for the next box, which is down the road that we can't talk about, like we already have that box. We don't even have the, we don't even have the adventure yet, but we have a really good sense of what's going to be in that box. Um, so we're a, a gazillion miles from where we were last year at this time. Yeah. For that release. Cool. Yeah. I just off the top, like, I so want to talk about what's in the next box. Oh, because yeah, there's yeah. a few things that I'm like, oh, if that's in the box, uh, yeah, 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 get really sure. excited. Well, online, tell me what they are, because that's <laughs> the kind of stuff like, you know, what we've seen and what we know, 
um, we're building, but I, like, that's the thing. Like I asked, you know, the question about your boss, did he like the box? I mean, the good news is that the people that bought the first, you know, a thousand, so if you don't know our company, we make a thousand boxes. The boxes are expensive. They're $500 each, but mm -hmm. there's 147 different items in the box. So, yep. oh, somebody's at my door. My dog's going crazy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I'm listening to see if the dogs are going to attack someone. <laughs> no worries. Um, so we, so we're building these boxes. Um, Oh, and, and the question is, you know, do you like, did, like, did your boss like the box? I mean, for us, we're still trying to gather what people liked and what they didn't like. I mean, there's mm -hmm. definitely, like, the community has lots of opinions. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, yeah. in the era of Twitter and Twitch and everyone's got opinions. We heard a lot of opinions. But the reality is that our customers, 99% of them are super excited that they bought the box and are happy with what we provided. So we're always looking to expand what's in the box. We're always looking to understand what people want, how to better satisfy and scratch that itch. So when you say, you know, I can't, I wonder if that's in the box. I want that information because yep. I want to know what you think's cool. I will, so I will shoot you an expand. email after. Cause I, okay, good. yeah, I, I, I reading the stuff I can't talk about. Um, sure, got yeah. very excited about some very specific things about it. So okay, let that's me know. Very cool. let me know. And I'll, I'll shoot you back to what we're talking about doing. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the people in chat wonders if there's ever, uh, if there are ever going to be plans to uh, break up the box into smaller individual components. Well, not really because we, you know, our, our client base, what we're doing is we're providing a very bespoke sort of collector's edition. And if we broke all those elements out, we're sort of disavowing our relationship with that that purchaser of the guy, the man or woman that buys the box. Now yeah. we are doing like you can buy our jewelry elements. So we've created five or six different jewelry elements. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so funny because I'm the guy that sends out the jewelry elements. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm the guy who's putting it together. But so for example, you know we have these coins. So oh yeah. Those are great. We made these, yeah, these, we made these coins. Um, Unpackage and sell things. Here is here's an unboxing of my own box. <laughs> so we made these coins, right? So they're metal coins. Yeah. Um, or Navian dragons. Yeah, the dragons. I boil. Yeah. So these are the, you know this is the gold you're finding in Waterdeep. Yeah. And so we went out and we commissioned somebody to to make the coins. So. These elements you can buy online. Um, you know, the Harper's pen. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. Like, even if, like, even if your guy, uh, your boss is out, like, creating maps and doing all these great things, he's not going out, probably, and creating, like, a metal pin. No. Um, you know, designing a, a Harper's pin and then putting it in a production and then making a thousand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Though if he now, could have a thousand coins, he would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he can he can call me up and order a thousand coins, and I'll pack them in a box. For him. <laughs> I'll, I will let him know because he might. So. Yeah, but these. I mean, look, these are the kind of things that we we sell on the side, mm -hmm. um, that we're really excited about, and that you know that people can pick up. And then the next box we're having, we're, we're introducing other elements you can sell on the side that we can sell on the side. Okay, I have some guesses over what, what that might be, yeah. but uh, so it will be jewelry, but then on top of it, there'll be other elements that we'll be able to sell, but cool. it will never fully be able to be recreated outside of the box. Mm -hmm. Now we do have, because the box is expensive. We understand that not everyone's game has 500 bucks and they sell out. I mean, two weeks after the box was opened by somebody in the States, mm -hmm. we sold out. So it, I mean, two weeks after I landed, we sold out, which is pretty fast. Yeah, that's a, a hard that's to get. But limited window. Yeah, but what we are doing is we have um, we've introduced this silver edition. So that's the platinum edition. The Waterdeep is the platinum edition. Yeah. Uh, the silver edition is unlimited amount. I mean, not unlimited. We're going to print a lot of them. Um, but that's a much more affordable box. It's one hundred and seventy-five dollars versus yeah. a five. 
And it's the same quality of things. Like there are two jewelry items in that box that are you know, still badass and, um, you know, a lot of time and energy and efforts going into making them. Mm -hmm. But uh, so same quality, just less things. Cool. Yeah. You know. One of the uh, players in chat wants to know if Bag of Bones or Bag of Nails will return to Dice Camera Action. I hope so. I thought for sure he was going to bring me back. And then I didn't, I never got, I mean, they're close to the end, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think the crux of that show is that um, every time they start getting towards some kind of conclusion of something, they peace out. <laughs> like, it just seems to be what the characters do. So uh, they, didn't, they, they, they never went into the tomb die. from Tomb of Annihilation. They, they, they die? Uh, sometimes. They, yeah, they seem kind of death prone. Uh, and like dying and coming back, but they uh, like they never went into the the tomb of the nine gods in Tomb of oh, Annihilation. No, no, they never. They uh, they ended up destroying the Soulmonger another way, but yeah, they never went into the tomb. <laughs> so yeah, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. Just, I wonder why. I mean, look, I think Perkins is an effing genius. I love Perkins. I yeah. Love the way he plays. I love the way he game. I mean, I love everything about him. So, and think, that group's fun. I mean, that was the first sort of game I had ever done. I mean, I was, I had streamed at like Stream of Many Eyes, although I don't think Stream of Annihilation, wait, stream, wait, which one was which? This is the first one I played a couple streams, but that was like one four hour session. I never played like week after week after week. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, uh, the Stream of Annihilation was, I think that one was in New York, wasn't it? Um, I didn't get to go to that. That was, that was before was, I began. Yeah, stream of, no, Stream of Annihilation was the one in Seattle. That was the first one. Yeah. Okay. Stream of many Waterdeep was Stream of Many Eyes, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was last June. That was. Yeah. So stream of, yeah, so stream of Annihilation was where I met all those guys. You're walking around I'm like, oh, there's Chris Perkins. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, there's Mike Merles. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. It's a trip, especially for the just the D&D community, like just sitting on the Waterdeep set and everybody who makes D&D &D is there pretty much looks like and pretty much yeah yeah and like, people who are on all the shows people who have their companies tied to it in some way or another whether it's you know like gale force 9 or or uh you know roll 20 or beetle and grims uh like everybody's kind of there it was, it was something else. there yeah it was really really cool i had a lot of fun plus you know i like, will say my predict that in maybe not next i will say in the next 10 years it's gonna be like a comic con it's gonna be huge I said the first time we're at Stream Annihilation, I said to Greg Tito, the guy that's running those streaming events. Yeah. You watch. We're going to be at this event in like 10 years. And it's going to be like, what just happened? <laughs> it's true. I mean, well, even just looking at the, a lot of the feedback from the Stream of Many Eyes, like everybody had such a great time. But a lot of people were like, we'd be sitting around the bar in, we'd be sitting around the Yawning Portal with like Ed Greenwood and other people being like, there's nowhere for us to play D and D right now. Like no, this bar, funny. it's too. It, yeah, like unless unless you're on one of the main stages uh, playing, right. or you're one of the the cool people who's way up in the green rooms, um, having a personal DM'd game by Jeremy Crawford or somebody. Uh, but the, everybody else who was sitting there were like, "Well, we'd like to play, but there's nowhere for us to do it." So um, right. I suspect they'll. I have a feeling that's going to be fixed. I think they're going to take care of that part. Yeah, it seems. I have a feeling they're going to fix it. Seems important. Um, uh, Sir Monstein would like to know what uh, alignment you have the most fun playing. Chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral? Yeah, because I like the idea that you can be... I mean, I like playing a thief. I like playing a rogue. I like being... Um, I mean, like, I think that how you play the game is really interesting. I, I, I think that I play the game... Like, our group plays a very specific way. Mm -hmm. Like, your guy talking about the, the improv for three hours about grilling him about what he learned out in the outside world. <laughs> I mean, we have a game that's not about slashing and burning and killing and, you know, vanquishing foes. It's really about cool moves, being really smart, coming at things. You know, we can literally spend, it's a little like a idle champions. We can spend hours talking about hypothetical ways to attack a situation. Yeah. And our DMs like you got, I mean, literally our DM was like, you guys have got to just do something. <laughs> Be like, well, what if we did this? Or, but you know, whether what if we came this side? Like, what am I putting? You know, so the idea of those of the way we play, like chaotic neutral, sort of fits because I can you can sort of do anything mm -hmm. now. And I also, but I say that 
and I just ran a paladin for like six years. Oh, and really? Yeah. Uh, and I like the idea that he can be completely obnoxious based on a true believing of something really epic. You know what I mean? Like he will ride head, head first into chaotic evil and does not care if he dies because his only true job is to, you know, to destroy evil. Mm -hmm. So I like that kind of like insanity in, you know, being completely committed to one thing. Does yeah. that make sense? No, it does. I, don't know. I mean, I don't know if that is, I mean, I would never play chaotic evil. I would never play an evil character. I think that that, I mean, that's not the way I like the, I don't like the game that way. Um, I like having a higher calling and not just killing good things. Yeah. So I, I would, I I'm not interested in that, but everything else is, I, 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 there's no bad way to spend the time at a gaming table, right? Yeah. Do you have a favorite class? Um, I, yeah, yeah, I said, I, I mean, I think like a, a King Trickster, like I like, I like craftiness. So a thief is really good for me. I also like monks. No monks. I like druids. Mm -hmm. I like I just ran, a, I ran two druids in a row that both got killed. <laughs> never split up the party. Ladies and gentlemen, never split up the party. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I like running the druid. I like running a shape-shifting druid a lot. Fair enough. Uh, it's, it's it's funny you said never split the party because I was playing D&D &D at lunch and we split the party right at the end not what? on purpose but just events kind of just directed characters yeah, slightly, that's what you always apart. Say. you end up <laughs> screwing it up it made sense the... yeah yeah more like the DM balanced no, the encounter not yeah right the DM balanced the encounter around all of you being present and a couple of you didn't show up so yeah, <laughs> this I is know. what's going to happen it now perfect yeah, but uh, uh, it's good. Um, I would like to, uh, before uh, uh, before we run out of time, uh, hear about Beetle. Um, because my experience yeah. with Beetle is literally just that fourth gray one shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to hear more about uh, the character that uh, the company uh, is named after. Yeah, he's so we played Age of Worms. Um, was it Beetle in Age of Worms or was he in Northern Campaign? I think it was the North Campaign. Sorry, it's not Age of Worms. That was my paladin. Um, so Beetle, look, like Beetle is this guy who talks like this. He's obnoxious. I mean, he's so obnoxious. And he, the great thing about Beetle is that he, so I, I was talking about this paladin and running face, head first into danger no matter what, yeah. in the name of something higher than. Beetle's in the name of something higher than is his love of magic. He's <laughs> magic. So he'll do anything for like the potential to find magic. Um, and Grim is a Grim, so Beetle and Grim, and then we had Vodum and um, who, is, who is Paul's character? Vodum and sorry, if I don't say it, he's going to kill me, although he's never going to watch. He's too old. Um, he, uh, it's going to, Garnal? No. Oh, Garnal. Yeah, Garnal. It was Garnal, Bodum, Beetle, and Grimm. Now, the fact that we named the company Beetle and Grimm still does not sit well with, <laughs> you know, two of the five people in the company. But Grimm was a giant slayer. So we would always end up in these huge battles of giants. And Grimm, and Beetle was like a little, uh, he was a, a dwarven thief. So he would get, so him and Grimm would work together killing giants all over the place, back attack, back attack. And yeah. Um, and he was a magic user before they sort of had Arcane Trickster. So he we played it at 3-5. So Beetle, a 3-5 character. Okay, yeah. And, you know, we played him for years. I mean, we I, I sort of, you know, loved playing him. And look, for us, gaming's about sitting around that table, and we end up laughing harder at that table than anywhere else in the world. I mean, we end up in full belly laughs all the time. And Beetle, because he was so obnoxious, I had to do a lot of that joy because he was like, you know, he was just a complete jerk and he was, it was hilarious. He was super fun to play. And, you know, and the, and the great thing about that campaign is that they were on this track to vanquish the destruction of this town, town of Traft. And, um, you know, so their whole time they were on this adventure to kill giants to vanquish giants and they opened a bar 
called the Giant's Bane. And so like I would spend hours drawing this bar. I mean, I'll never forget drawing this bar barn and like going into my computer and be like, here's a trap here and I've got a potion here. And then if anyone <laughs> comes there, I've got like, you know, a thing that I could drop oil on the fire that, you know, all these crazy things, which is hilarious. Huh. Cool. As, and yeah. like, as, as a character, like how, how has he stuck with you compared to your others? Like, is he your most like memorable character you've played uh, in D and D? Well, yeah. I mean, certainly now. I mean, God, we named a company after him, so now I feel like he's he comes up a lot. I get asked the question a lot about Beetle. Like, we just we created a mini to do. You know, we're gonna try to create a mini of Beetle and Grimm. So, oh. you know, we've got a lot of stuff in the works for them, and we're talking about like you know maybe doing a shirt with Beetle on it. And so there's a lot of stuff. I and mean, now because of all these things, you know, he's he's forefront and sort of in my life again. Yeah, um, character I haven't played in. I mean, until I, I whipped him out without Forrest Gray, I didn't play him in years. Huh. Um, but he's fun. He's like, you know, it's like putting on an old coat. You're like, ah, oh, I love playing him. And, you know, look, and that's the funny thing. It was like, you know, you're like in these games, like Alistair Goldfang is like a character of, I only played one time. I mean, I played it in that one game. So you're like, you're, you're trying to figure out how to even play them. Like you're now you're talking to the Sculptish accent and you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> it's like so much of it. You're like, you're trying to keep up with the game, hold role playing, get know how to cast and like your spells and like how he works. The great thing about Beetle is that I've played him for so long. It's like just jumping in and, and you know, sort of his approach and what he would do and what he cares about and how to play him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, each character, like for me, I'm an actor. I like playing characters. I like making big. And something about stepping back in and playing with Beetle is super rewarding. Mm -hmm. Cool. What do you play? Uh, I am playing a Shatterkai Elf Warlock in our. Uh, uh, what is a Shatterkai Elf war What is a Shatterkai? Uh, so to get super nerdy for a moment, um, when the. Elves were splitting off from the Eladrin and becoming different types of elves. The Raven Queen was still an elf. And through some uh, unknown, undescribed magic series of rituals, she was inventing a new kind of magic and made herself powerful enough with her followers to basically try to talk Corellin and Lolth into, you know, getting their shit together. And it was sabotaged. I love this story. Yeah, and it was sabotaged, and she. I never told this story. Yeah, and she was like fragmented. I think it's in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, the the stuff about the the Raven Queen and her elves, and so she was like obliterated in a way and became the Raven Queen in the Shadowfell, and then all of her followers um, became Shatter Kai. They're like these sort of like almost ghostly elves that are. They look normal under most circumstances, but then in other circumstances, they look like weathered and worn and wrecked because they just get reborn into the Shadowfell over and over serving her. And so mm -hmm. my character is doubled down. He's a warlock who serves her and thinks that's what, that's what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I uh, Very neutral. Super. It's, I love these. I love these stories. We're like. I mean, there that is the level of D, D like I don't play that level. Like that's like that's epic level. Like this is my crazy history. Like you're good. I don't know. Well, uh thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. I appreciate you're it. Man. And, yeah, uh, happy beer. Yeah. And uh I will shoot you an email about uh about Beetle. Uh oh, yeah, and but also about uh, uh about the next box set. Uh, just I to, hope your, uh, just your, characters make, uh, your, your characters make it to the big boss because they are kicking ass. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're getting there. Good. All anyway. right, brother. Well, thanks, Dylan. No worries. Have a great day. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers. And, oh, I should hit that button to do the thing. There we go. There's that thing. Why did the color on me change? That's so strange. Um, I know we got a flurry of questions in and uh, uh, didn't get to them all, and I will do my best to get through everything as we uh, as we move on. It's funny. Uh, there was a couple times where the the call is is kind of like stuttering for a second, and I'm like, I don't know if that's our internet or his internet or Wi-Fi or something in between or something in the office or did somebody upload a new build of the game to something and so on. And uh, yeah, 
anyways, uh, yeah, huge thanks to uh, uh, Matthew Lillard uh, for joining us. And uh, yeah, as somebody who was a teenager in the 90s, uh, he made a lot of films and stuff that are still near and dear uh, to me. So very, very cool. Fun moment. Um, so, hi everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna take a look, quick look at this formation and make sure that it's, well, it's not optimal, but it's, it is what it is right now. Cause I don't actually use Black Viper to push past my wall right now. So if I'm approaching, well, I guess I'm like 80 levels away from my wall, but maybe it's time to load one of my other formations. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, and then... Um, oh god, no, not Narak. Ugh, Narak. Um, there we go. And anybody wondering why, like, images and stuff uh, aren't loading up as quickly? I actually, like, reinstalled the game just before the stream started. Um, because the streaming machine wasn't quite working ideally. And, uh, yeah, just to get everything back up to normal. And then I think Deacon's specialization is wrong. So tons of the icons haven't been re-downloaded yet. Where is... Oh man, here we go. Because I know that Deacon's spec is wrong. There we go. Cool, that's a little more optimal. That'll go a lot further. All right, so we had a pretty cool update this week with our uh, variance and uh, quality of life update. Uh, open 50 chests to show it off. Uh, yeah, I will do that, Sidely, so I'll do that in a moment. Um, and before I do, I am gonna talk a little bit about these fun things. Um, we had the good fortune of having uh, a WizKid send send us a number of these. We've got uh, quite a few to give away. Now, we're doing two different types of giveaways for them. We're doing giveaways in the uh, uh, in our Twitch chat uh, today, uh, where you can enter to win one of these, and we will, we will ship it to you. See this shiny knife so that I can cut the plastic, because I'm going to open this one right now. Because uh, these have the coolest stuff in them. They come with a large or huge mini, as well as three medium or small minis. And uh, so we got a number of those to give away. And then we're also doing a Gleam giveaway that anybody can enter. Uh, we will announce the winners on next week's stream, um, where the one winner will get two of, the, two of these boosters and this here uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage Halister's Lab premium set uh, from WizKids. Uh, it's got a whole lot of just stuff. Um, yeah, there's a list of contents. Anyways, um, as well as uh, uh, at least four more people will each get a booster through that giveaway. So if anybody would like to do that, um, uh, that's the, yeah, join our, our Gleam giveaway. Um, and uh, you will have, you'll have time between now and then to do it. And looks like the game is running out of memory in that area. Let's see if, actually, I don't really know. Oh no, it's still doing it. That's weird. What am I gonna do? I think I'm gonna restart. Cause that's strange. It's an odd issue to have. And it's not one that I regularly have. So maybe I just need to. Reboot. It's the first time that's happened on stream. Weird. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Catch up. There we go. That's better. Um, anyways, so that's pretty cool. And I'm just going to open this here box and take a look-see inside. Crossing my fingers that uh, I got a human paladin in here. Oh, hey. Wow, that's a it's barely a mini at this point. It's so large. So, go Ristro. That's pretty awesome. 
Uh, yeah, I'll hold that up again because he looks so cool. Not that the camera will properly focus on him, but go Ristro. Um, that's sweet. And then I haven't played through Dungeons and Mad Mage. I got one of these. It's a, uh, a, a, a champion Naeli code. And uh, I think what I will do is I will give this code away on the official Idle Champions Discord after the stream, uh, which is at discord.gg slash Idle Champions uh, in case somebody wants it. Uh, I've also given a, a handful of those codes to Mars, one of our uh, moderators uh, who handles Mars' Idle Trials uh, as, a, as a prize to win. Uh, 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 you know, uh, in, with some something in some way tied into the uh, 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 doing the uh, performing idle trials. So um, check out that as well. Let's see what else did I get for? I got a human storm sorcerer, which is so tiny. There's no way that the camera is going to get that in focus because it's just it's not. Yeah, but that's cool. What else? Oh, this is a tiny one. That is. A gnome inquisitive. It's got a little magnifying glass and stuff. And somebody with a shield. Tiefling Battlemaster. Woo! Cool stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, bubbles to pop. I love bubbles to pop. Anyways, uh, there are flumps in this set. Uh, as you can tell right there. Flump, right beside the frog hemoth. Uh, so you should buy lots of this product just to try and get a flump, at least until you get one. Um, I forget who opened the one in the office, but uh, I, I know a number of us were jealous. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, we're giving away a few of those in chat today, uh, as well as through the giveaway. Oh god, I just knocked the controller on the ground. And, um, yeah, we're pretty stoked about that. Uh, uh, and I'm pretty stoked about this dude, Go Ristro, because how sweet is that? Just this giant demon dude. I already have a frog hemoth on my desk. I'm going to add the Goristro. Uh, anyways, uh, so we were pretty excited to have the opportunity to even do that with uh, WizKids. Um, the lead time uh, for their products is one of those things where, uh, you know, like, their development cycle is so long that uh, uh, we, uh, it, you know, like we talked to them about doing uh, the what became the Champion Naily promotion um, in 2017, um, and it, this was all put together in like early 2018, and uh, it's hitting shelves now. And like, because it's a uh, something that's it's a physical product that gets shipped all around the world wherever WizKids minis are sold. Um, you know, some places don't have them, but yeah. Um, uh, there's a current giveaway right now. I think it's gonna close pretty quickly, but. Um, yeah, it, uh, uh, you'll, you can get one of these. I got another one. Um, I might open another one, but I do want to, I, I am going to be, I do want to give a bunch of these away uh, to people who want them. So, uh, and if you win, uh, you will, yeah, you get your champion Naily insert. Um, I'll share this code on Discord later. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, uh, follow the rules in chat uh, to, to win your things. Um, and good luck. To whomever uh, wins the stuff. Um, I know that was super articulate. Uh, I'm like, my focus is split apart into a bunch of uh, different things. Um, yeah, whiz kids. Uh, Chris actually sent me a message saying that I said uh, Gale Force Nine earlier, and that was that was incorrect. Um, uh, although Gale Force Nine also makes awesome things, and I will be doing a Gale Force Nine giveaway in the near future as well uh, for some very cool things. That, but um, yeah, this stuff this stuff's always kids. Um, yeah, cool stuff. I just want to take all this home, like all these boxes, and just open them all because that's the fun part. Um, so. Yes, the uh, uh, for anybody uh, uh, who maybe doesn't win, um, uh, or, you know, hoping to get a code uh, from one way or another, uh, please don't buy them on eBay or something. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these inserts get produced. Uh, I am fully confident that everybody um, who is unable to just simply purchase a booster to get one if they want, if they want one, um, or isn't already doing it, like codes are codes are around. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know. Be patient and hang in there. Um, and I also want to talk about something else really cool before I dive into the update-related stuff that we've had over the past week. Um, 
Idle Podcast Bug Support. Uh, uh, if you haven't heard of it yet, um, you will. Um, uh, 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 but I'm pretty sure uh, it was tweeted out at like 1, right when the show was starting. Uh, God, I can't even type today. I'm all, I'm all out of whack because Chris broke my mouse on the weekend. Um, uh, uh, I can't find it. Anyways, um, Chris Dupuy, uh, the wonderful Chris Dupuy, also known as at GameGuruChris on, uh, uh, on, uh, on the Twitters, uh, as well as our very own uh, Catherine Crane, uh, also known as at TetArtMonkey, uh, the art monkey, but T-E-H. Uh, uh, participated in a three-part, uh, three-podcast special one-shot D&D game uh, called Idle Podcast Bug Support. Uh, so they will be on the March 18th episode of Dungeon Drunks, the March 20th episode of Taking Initiative, and the March 22nd episode of How We Roll. Um, uh, uh, Kat played um, uh, her character Hemlock, uh, an Eladrin Circle of the Spores Druid that she created and played uh, for uh, a, a, an, in, an in-house one-shot last summer uh, when we did uh, the Sunless Citadel uh, uh, as a company. And then Chris Dupuy is playing uh, Stammy Stokey Gackle, uh, uh, you know, uh, our, our own first ever event champion, uh, Stokey. Uh, uh, you know, code name Pickle. Uh, I think when she was in development, uh, uh, so uh, Chris played Stokey on the podcast. So we're we're pretty excited to get to hear it as it's released. Uh, and uh, I I get the impression that they had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and why wouldn't they? I mean, Lauren's involved, so it was probably just awesome all the way through. So yeah, March 18, uh, 20, Dungeon Drunks. March twenty, Taking Initiative, and March twenty second, How We Roll. Um, epic one shot, and uh, yeah. Uh, we had some people involved. It was very cool, um, and uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's let's dive into the uh, the the variance and quality of life update because, um, yeah, it was uh, something that we worked really really hard on, and uh, we were excited to be able to share and talk about more. Um, I'm sure everybody has already uh, uh, dived into into it already. Um, you know, we have a, a few new variants in the the Grand Tour, Tomb Annihilation, and Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaigns, um, as well as um, we've done some pretty cool stuff with opening chests. And, and I'm gonna, um, you know, I've never actually bought anything in the. Uh, I've never actually purchased anything using this interface before, so. Where do I go to get silver chests? Let's buy 25 of them several times. Two, three, four. So, because I'm sure everybody is familiar with how long it takes to to open uh, that many chests, and. Uh, Now you can do this. And then it'll show you the highlights and everything else. Check that out. Boom. Uh, Peter worked his ass off putting this together and he did a killer job. We're really, really happy with it. And obvi obviously we've, you know, we've heard some feedback from the community about some tweaks and changes and some things that we can do with this and other aspects of the update. And uh, you know, we, we're, we're on it. Um, don't consider any of these things 100% finalized. We're never touching them again. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very cool to be able to uh, open so many at once. Ugh, no shiny that time either. Darn. Um, we've also improved the usage of uh, uh, different contracts. So if I take this large black blacksmithing contract that uh, I'm going to use on somebody whose base didn't show up right, Archon, because I use all of them on Archon. It's like you can do them more than once. Boom. Ah, oh, what an improvement. I'm just going to use all 10 of the epic ones I have left because, I, quite frankly, I've been using almost all of my contracts in Archon for a while now, so uh, he's getting some item levels. I could probably buy a ton of gold chests uh, with 
the ludicrous number of gems I've managed to save up, but uh, I just haven't done it yet. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, we, we have a, a still very long list of quality of life updates and changes we would like to bring to Idle Champions, but <coughs> we were really happy to be able to get so much of it done. Uh, uh, well, these ones done. And uh, don't consider the uh, uh, the blacksmith contractor or uh, usage as the finalized version of it. There are, there are some improvements we'd like to make, but we wanted to make at least this uh, this uh, minor up update uh, now uh, before we get into something else down the line. I just need to drink some water because my throat is getting dry today. Ah. <coughs> hmm. uh. So, uh, how is everybody else doing, by the way? Um, the only thing I don't like about having guests right off the start of the show is that I don't get to welcome everybody to the stream like I regularly do. So, uh, I hope everybody is doing really well. And, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just kind of getting into the Q&A stuff now. Um, uh, is there quality quality of life update planned for event gear? Um how you earn equipment and item levels for event champions is something that we're looking into improving. Um, to give more information than that would be a little bit unfair because uh, nothing is locked in or finalized yet. But um, yeah, uh, that's something that's 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 on our list. Um, I see that somebody asked probably a while ago. Excuse me. Um, the uh, the the requisite uh, you know when or if uh, are, are you going to include the critical role characters in the game? Um, that is very much something that we would like to do. Um, uh, Dylan thinks it's very unlikely as of uh, uh, due to how busy they are. Um, but I mean, obviously, if we can, uh, we will. Uh, so we we cross our fingers. We would hope you would cross your fingers too, and maybe someday. But um, that's a, that's about where we can leave that. Uh, it's me lane uh, asks is there potential for some high rollers characters soon uh, and again I know I'm catching up on questions probably from like an hour ago uh, yes yeah um, the first of them will be coming um, well within the next couple months I should say uh, obviously next week's event uh, going live will be festival of fools year two and uh, the two event champions associated with that uh, with that one are the bee stingers uh, who not coincidentally uh, the bee stingers will be on stream uh, with me next week too so we're pretty excited about that it's always fun to get to talk to very cool people and uh, the bee stingers are very very cool people uh, but yes uh, more high rollers characters or well, I guess anyways the first of the high rollers characters uh, will be coming soon uh, uh, with the rest of them planned out for yeah to be kind of staggered release over the course of the year uh, as we line up events and people with things. I mean, don't forget we have Walnut Dangrass, uh, Dangrass to uh, add to the game down the line. We have, we're, we're in pretty dire need, I think, of a lawful evil assassin of some kind. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, I guess, if Chris wants to do that. Um, as well as a number of other characters that uh, uh, from uh, various places uh, in the Forgotten Realms uh, canon uh, will be coming. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, alrighty, so, uh, let's see, Giant Dwarf, uh, so despite this being the last release skin, this is the first design skin? Uh, it's not the first design one, um, the, that's the question from Giant Dwarf. The promotion that the skin was a part of, the costume, the outfit, I think we're going with outfit, is the, how we're gonna refer to them, officially. Uh, so the Champion Naily outfit, um, was not designed when we put the promotion together, uh, the promotion, uh, the insert sheets that we printed off, all that stuff was done a year ago. Um, however, the Champion Naily uh, outfit was iterated on and redesigned and redesigned and done by Adam uh, a few months back. So it's it's much more new. Um, it was you know it was designed in the midst of our uh, uh, character uh, outfit. I think he probably did it around the same time that Yum Yum Hut Donar was done. So yeah. Uh, uh, Wicked Lazy, hello streamer. Can you please go over when you should use your favor and when you should reset it? Um, 
so there's there's quite a few different schools of thought on that um and i don't i couldn't tell you which one is the right one um what i do is if i'm i mean i have all the blessings now but when i was building my favor and purchasing blessings what i would do is i would never spend um i would make sure that 50 percent of my total favor i kept at any given time so i would spend if i had you know, if I had a million favor, hypothetically, I would spend up to 500,000 on uh, blessings and I would keep the rest. Uh, now it's because you want to be able to, you want the, the blessings to improve how much further you can go. Um, but then you want to make sure that you get there relatively quickly. Like you don't slow down your progress too much and then you spend it. Um, more conservative players who have lots of favor or, you know, whatever you can, you can spend one maybe maybe 10 percent of your total favor on a specific upgrade but generally you want to keep the bulk of your favor out of your blessings so that you can level up your champions as quickly as possible and you know basically uh, so you can spend more time idling uh now in terms of how much you earn like you want to keep pushing to your wall over and over again until you're you know making tiny amounts of progress it's, you know, it's, uh, I'm sure Garwar is in chat and could probably better explain, um, what is a, a, a good amount of time to do, uh, building your favor. Um, but you want to, you know, you aren't at your wall unless you are earning like just a, a couple percent of favor each run. So if you're still getting five, 10, 20 or more percent, um, from powering up to your wall and resetting, then keep doing that until that number gets a lot smaller. Uh, uh, Dara Strigat, is your adventure page showing X favor based on current gold or total gold? Because mine's showing only current and I'm not sure it's supposed to do that. Asking here because I'm not sure it's worth opening a whole ticket for. Um, based on your description of that, I can't answer it. Uh, yeah, because I like, I think that's a, a case where opening a ticket might be better because then somebody can look at your account and make sure that there's nothing funky going on. Uh, zero one three seven uh, fifty thousand gems banked. All familiars have been purchased. What now? That's a great question. Uh, now, obviously down the line we will be adding additional uh, familiars to the game, so saving up gems isn't isn't worthless. Uh, and I mean. Now that all of your characters are in epics, uh, buy tons of silver chests and open them all to uh, get shinies and item levels. Like that's that's kind of the thing that you can spend it on if you if you feel like spending your gems, like item levels. Uh, suggestion: make shiny items more shiny in the loot screen. I will make a note about that for the devs because uh, I've noticed as well that when you're opening mass opening chests that um, they don't uh, show up uh, as, as easily as you would like. Uh, Cassius335, any reason to bother with the show all loot screen when you only open one chest? Um, only if you want to see everything that's in it. Um, our Green Paradox, are the quality of life updates for the players or is it quality of life for you guys because we will shut up about them, LOL. Um, well, first and foremost, it's for our players. Like, obviously we would, pref you know, we are, we are happy to have fewer tickets about some of these topics, uh, to make these things easier for player. But at the same time, like, um, they're for both of us. Like every improvement we make to the game, um, is, is a good thing for us as a company, because like, we want our game to be a better game. Um, and we want players to have a better experience in it. Uh, uh, but certainly, uh, sometimes bug fixes and quality of life things are are to make it uh, easier on uh, David and Peter and whomever else is uh, answering tickets. Because if we fix those things, those tickets don't come in. So um, it also, you know, it also impacts how we design some of our quality of life changes. Like there are aspects to how the how some changes are done that you know, like we feel like we've thought through and we've tested and we understand how it works and it works. And then you release that into the wild. And, you know, shortly after players are like, actually, it'd be better if you did this specific thing. Um, or if you did it this way, you, we wouldn't have to ask questions about this other thing or whatever. And so, yeah, we will, uh, we will get there. Um, let's see. Detroit Goth. Good name. 
Uh, a button to optimize the formation at a cost of gold or gems. This will use the existing heroes in play and when cost more based on a value attributed to place unlocked, the, the player then saves the formation to use later. Oh, so you want the game to figure out the best way to put the characters in. Um, I mean, I think that takes away the, the strategy management aspect of our idle strategy management game. Um, so I don't know if that's a feature that people would look at because like we like the idea that players are exploring um, how best to use their characters because not everybody has the same the same exact selection of champions with the same exact item levels um, and can thus use the exact same formations necessarily to be as effective as possible like we like that players have differing options that vary based on uh, uh, you know which characters they have what gear which characters have and like it changes who your optimized lineup is so uh, we think that that exploration is an important part of the game so i don't know that we'll do anything about that detroit goth but um it's certainly something i can pass along uh that would go to uh desatronis any chance of ishi's crew from roll 20. Uh, i assume you mean uh, roll 20 presents tomb of annihilation um it's not impossible Uh, Wade Wilson, 1983. Uh, have you ever considered doing some sort of contest where someone could win having a character added or a home character added? Um, that's come up before. I don't know that it's something that we would actually um, do because, well, we have so many lore characters to bring in and so many characters from people that we work with to bring in. Like, I mean, you know, uh, Matt Lillard was just talking about bringing Beetle into the game and like, Sure, we could do that. Um, but anyways, uh, we have a long list of characters, so it's unlikely, but it's not impossible, I guess is the way I should phrase it. Uh, I'm a new player, started yesterday wondering how these events work. What are some tips going into them as a new player? Um, absolutely join us on uh, the official Discord at discord.gg slash idlechampions or on the subreddit, like reddit.com slash r slash idlechampions uh, because guides get put down all the time. Uh, Garwar writes in, in Garwar specifically writes fantastic event guides every time an event comes out on how to approach it both as a first time player and also as a year two player, year three, whatever, what to, what to focus on. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to plan for the festival of a fool, a festival of fools events next week where you can unlock a uh, Strix bee stinger and Rosie bee stinger, um, definitely tune in to Garwar's guide on that. Uh, Uh, let's see. Soul Reaver. Will next upcoming skins be available for everybody or free unlocks? Um, how do I phrase this? Uh, we have a mix of outfits coming to the game. Some will be unlocks. Some will not. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I can say on that subject there. Um, and like for the record, like when... Uh, there's only so much I can say to address anything that isn't officially released in the game. So if you've found stuff in the files that reflects something that's not in the game yet, um, there's only so much I can say. Uh, Wyverny win. Uh, I noticed in the new variant that has gender-based slots for formation, you can place Warden in male slots. I thought he was genderless. Uh, so Warden is not a he. Warden is a they. So Warden uh, you can place anywhere. Uh, Warden doesn't identify as male or female. Um, and the slots are basically there are slots that uh, male champions cannot be used in and slots that female champions cannot be used in, but Warden doesn't fit into either of those criteria, so Warden can be everywhere, anywhere. Um, yeah, so I think it's it's just probably a, 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 a... First of all, Warden is a they, but also, you know, singular they, if anybody wants to look it up. And uh, yeah, uh, can be used in any, any of the slots in that uh, variant. Uh, Giant Dwarf, is there any way under the mouse and keyboard UI uh, to determine what damage the hunters in the new on the hunt are doing? I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, poke the team. I haven't even loaded up that variant yet. Uh, let's see, it's rats. Uh, when will we have a chance to get the Mimic Familiar again? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I can't spoil, um, but our intent 
is not for uh, loot items like the Mimic Familiar or Party Time Jarlaxle to be singular, one and done, one use things. So um, you can count on it returning, um, but in what way, uh, I can't say. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess uh, you will have another chance, but I can't say more than that. Uh, uh, Anathal Belazar, how far up is your joy level from 1 to 10 when you hear Jared Nabenbauer mention Idle Champions and Dice Camera Action? Um, pretty high. Uh, I mean, it's always nice to be mentioned. Um, yeah, that's that's great. I love it. Um, love, love, love it. Uh, Rathkanan. Rathkanan? Uh, will there be a stat boosting for the champs by when leveling? Oh, so you mean like uh, uh, ability score increases, like when you're playing D&D uh, uh, &D normally? Um, I don't know that that's something that we will do. Um, I know in the past we've said categorically no, but I think at this point it's probably categorically maybe, but like it's not something that we're kind of looking at. Um, it would uh, make balancing the game more challenging to introduce stuff like that because then all of a sudden you would have things like, uh, oh, so and so leveled up this. Now they're eligible for these other buffs, and like, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a balancing can of worms that I think we're trying to keep closed at the moment. But um, certainly, I can make a note. Uh, when an event ends, what is the most effective method for deciding where to convert favor? That's a great question. Now, what I personally do is I like to space out my favor increases across my campaigns. Uh, so like right now, um, my Helm's favor is, is high, well, reasonably high. Um, and so what I do usually is I look at which which ones I last updated and I kind of just rotate through them. Um, and, uh, you know, because now you can get up to like E20 during an event if you're really pushing it, uh, which will, you know, that's a 200% increase to how much campaign favor you have. So like, which campaign do you want to boost? Which one needs a boost? Um, which one, now are there any that you don't have blessings finished in, um, you know? But uh, I try to, I try to kind of keep it equal. Um, I know that's the most, uh, not the best answer, but yeah, that's what I got. Uh, is there a chance that we get Chris Perkins indirectly now that he gone bolched? I'm not sure I understand that, Anathal Belazar. Can you elaborate on that one? Um, abstract Oakbow. Uh, incentivizing players to push their wall during events by allowing silver and maybe even gold event chests for the champion to drop. Um, there's a, a lot to look at when it comes to uh, event chests and characters and earning item levels and stuff like that. It's a that's a much tougher balancing act than a lot of other aspects of the game. Um, so, I mean, I, I can pass feedback on that subject along to Chris and Justin, but like, yeah, ultimately uh, those suggestions get passed to them and they'll, they'll decide what to do. Uh, Jinjink. Uh, will there be updates to characters' bios if they're active characters, such as Strix being adopted into a Bee Stinger? Um, that's a fantastic question. So. The character, the character background, the character sheet that we have in game is something that we'd like to iterate on further. We'd like to further develop it, and we haven't had an opportunity to approach it in a way that we would like. Uh, we're also, you know, considering down the line um, an overhaul of the the keyboard and mouse slash tablet interface, uh, taking you know some of the new portrait assets and other art things that were created for um, uh, the the console slash gamepad UI and just kind of uh, giving it a, a, you know, giving it some TLC. And I'm gonna burn all those devourers and then let Archon chunk Nihiler. Boom, goodbye, buddy. Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, uh, so like approaching the character sheets better is something that we'd like to do. We're limited right now on how much character space we have and the layout for the 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 keyboard and mouse interface 
and so whatever we do, we want to be able to we want to be able to cite sources. Like we want to be able to say where we got that character sheet from. We want to say where that character had their first appearance in. Like why are they in this game? It's like oh, this character was in this novel in this year, or this this character was on this show, or whatever. And so there's stuff that we want to add to that, and certainly um, you know including uh, Strix's adoption as a bee stinger would be something worth helping. Uh, Ted Faster, when will we get the quality of life update for the alpha? Uh, that's a great question that I can't answer. Um, and I assume you're talking about the, the WebGL alpha test. Uh, I mean, every, everything gets built for it, but I, I couldn't tell you when that update is. But I will pass that along to uh, uh, Peter and Justin. Uh, uh, such a zero. Who is your favorite champion in Idle Champions? Uh, I got to go with... Hmm. I got to go with either Archon the Cruel, because I love Usurp Power, and I love the way that it forces you to completely turn your formations on their head in a way that almost no other character does at this point. Uh, I mean, you know, there are, other there are other champions where it's tricky to use them as a support because you want them to fit certain criteria, like uh, your placement of Paulton, or, you know, to, to optimize him. But, like, Usurp Power just flips the whole the meta table on its head and it's powerful and it's rewarding and it's worth doing and yeah so Archon's pretty good uh, Wookie Monster Archon doesn't suck uh, at least not for me I can I can get higher DPS formations with Archon than any other character um, now that being said um, my other favorite character for Idle Champions is Warden uh, because uh, I had a lot of fun designing them uh, both the uh, how the character functions but also their character sheet and everything else uh, and then Kat did a crazy good job uh, drawing them. So, yeah. Rao91. Good day to you, Master Dylan. How are you today? Uh, I'm well. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, you know, got to chat with uh, Matthew Lillard, which was fun. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of... It's, uh, it's been fun. In fact, it's been so fun. I'm going to open another one of these. One, another one of these cool things. Don't worry, I'm, there's still many more... Uh, 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 for you guys, I got another, another few boxes, but uh, I can do this, and nobody can stop me because I'm in a closed room behind a, behind a wall. So I'm just going to open this next one uh, and see what what's inside. I'm I'm really just I'm hoping to get a Naeli to give to Chris Dupuy because he was he was asking about a Naeli. So, oh, what is that? Oh man. Uh, alrighty, so let's go with the small minis first, because the big one is a trip, but... Thug Leader! This dude looks awesome. It's kind of like this muscly dude with the cloak and a crossbow. It's sweet. Another one of these, of course. Give that away on the Discord after this. Uh... Oh! The Grung. That's so tiny. I so don't have a camera that's well set up for this. And who's the other character? Oh, what? Is it another thug? Oh, there's another kind of thug. Just thug. This thug is a total silver fox. Huh. And... The frog hemoth. Now, it's not a flump. But it is a frog hemoth. That's cool. Um, anyways, so um, this is what having fun looks like on stream. Uh, no flump though. I was really hoping for a flump or for a Naeli, but uh, that just increases the chances of one of you getting it because I didn't get it because uh, these are all from uh, two different uh, bricks. Uh, but yeah, frog hemoth. I love this one. I already have one on my desk, so I will I will pass this along to somebody in the office. Um, 0137. Wow, opening 50 chants at once with the new system is amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, that's, that's all Peter, I'm pretty sure, so. Yeah, Sunstar DK, are there going to be any boxes left to win? Or are Dylan opening them all on stream? Um, let's just say that, oh, there's a Halister thing. I should put that down. I have many more of these. I have at least two stacks of these. 
uh, waiting here uh, to give away this week and next week. Uh, and I'm hoping to get them all, have them all being given away, to give them all, give them all away by uh, uh, end of next week's stream. So, yes, there are more coming. There are more coming. So, uh, yeah. Alrighty, Wade Wilson, 1983. Is there any character you would personally like to see added, even if it's one that probably never will? Um, so, one of the things, so that's a really interesting question. Um, I find that the characters that I like to see added to the game the most are the ones that I personally have some kind of uh, like emotional connection to. Like, it's either I read about them in a book, or like they're on a show that I enjoy watching, that kind of thing. Um, you know, so uh, it's tricky to decide who uh, who I would want most. Um, oh, so many good characters from shows. Uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Warrington Monk, uh, Warrington Munt. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of characters like uh, uh, Bass and Kale, uh, who are just cool and unique and would like provide a really, really good opportunity for the art team to do something awesome. Um, you know, there's this uh, really, really spiky, dirty dwarf that would be really cool. Uh, there's an infamous lawful evil assassin antagonist who uh who would be cool to add um yeah tons of great characters um but uh yeah you know off the top of my head just thinking about uh, uh different ones uh, i mean you get you get so excited about so many different ones i think any uh, uh any character from vox machina or the mighty nine would be super exciting uh if if we're lucky yeah uh nasen bear 75 what is the best way to use time portals just do the two missions for the gold chest or farm the whole three days uh i don't personally farm for the whole three days what i do is i get both of the chests and then i will do a free play to my wall you know, like, or at least roughly a wall, and then that's it. I would do, like, I would get to my wall, um, uh, just so that I'm getting at least, like, a 25 to 30%-ish uh, favor gain to one of my favors, uh, and, and leave it at that. Uh, question. Tablet app news. I'm not sure what that means, uh, Kinjia190-2001. Uh, gliding secret. Any chance we could see a dual class champion added? Uh, well, actually. Fighter Rogue, right there. Ishii Snaggletooth, played by the one and only Distracted Elf on uh, uh, the Roll 20's Tomb of Annihilation campaign. Uh, also happens to be one of my favorite design champions in terms of just like how well the art and colors and all came together and uh ishi's really good anyways fighter rogue right there uh we actually probably would have had a uh, fighter rogue sooner uh, or rather a multi-class sooner um but um uh you can't fit a uh, fighter barbarian in our interface <laughs> uh so well excuse me so binwin was just a bar uh, just a fighter um instead of being a fighter barbarian so Anyways, uh, but yeah, there's likely to be more multi-classes in the future, but uh, because it like, can't quite fit the names into the uh, uh, the mouse and keyboard UI, that um, we uh, we don't um, do it very much. And yes, as uh, uh, Dara Strigat uh, points out, Valanya is also a bard wizard. Alrighty, Malkovich HS... Is there going to be any way in the future to get Archon's golden usurp power item? Um, I don't know if I have an answer for that that I can share. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, what can I share about that? Um, 
Any any news related to getting um, golden epic cards that have already come out in some way? Um, any yeah, I can't. Anything that I share on that subject would be premature because there are things that are not quite locked in and how they're going to be implemented. Like, yes, there is some code in the game for it. And yes, we have reference to different things, but like that stuff's not finalized. So it'd be premature to talk about it. Um, but I don't think that we have an intent of ever making it so that there's no way to get something again. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Sunstar DK, there's a gold elf vampire hunter who hates Strahd, who could be fun to see. Sadly, hasn't been seen since, I think, second edition. Uh, yeah, you know what? And on that note, um, a character that I totally forgot about that I would love to see, Esmeralda would be awesome. Um, I don't know if we're going to do it, but that would be cool. Chris. Um, all right. Uh, Legendary Dragon 75. Uh, is there any quick way to get gems? Because it feels slow to me. Um, the fastest way to get gems uh, is to do the Mad Wizard free play, and that's because at least right now, um, there are areas in it that have faster respawn times for monsters uh, than any other uh, any of the other adventures or variants. And so you can power through enemies uh, areas quickly, especially if you have like Deacon and, you know, uh, potions of speed or whatever. And like you can defeat bosses really quickly and get, you know, uh, progress really far and then reset quickly so that's the fastest way to get gems uh, other than that like staying on top of content like making sure you complete each variant i mean you get huge chunks of gems with those too uh cassius 335 i have 655 small bounty contracts hoping we get the ability to open more than 10 at once uh someday um yeah actually that's um, i mean that's on our list of quality of life stuff so i'll just uh, make a note for the respective devs Blade Dragon 997. Is it possible to talk about whether you plan for all specializations to be balanced or just have a viable character? Thinking of Tyrell's Moonbeam being greater than Bear Form. Um, so that's it's funny you should ask that, actually. Uh, we have an update coming very soon. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, not next week, but, but very soon. Uh, uh, that is going to include balances around all 12 of our core champions. Uh, you know, the, the 12 being the, the initial 12 champions that you have access to before unlocking anybody else, before Hitch, you know, before you've played enough to get Dritz and Azaka or played events. Uh, so there's initial 12. Uh, Bruner, Celeste, Naeli, Jarlaxel, Calliope, Ashara, uh, who's that for Ashara? Minsk, Delana, Hitch, no, not Hitch, uh, Delana, Delana's in that slot. Uh, Minsk, Delana, Makos, Tyrell, um, Jamila and Archon, all 12. Um, they're all getting looked at. Now, there's a few of them that we're really, really happy with overall, like, uh, you know, like Celeste, we're pretty happy with. Um, but, you know, her spec choice still isn't a choice, so we're going to tweak that. Um, same with Tyrell, uh, uh, Moonbeam being such a phenomenally strong buff and categorically better than Fair Form um, from the vast majority of formations. Um, Personally, I see that as more like we don't have enough good tanks, um, but, uh, you know, because that means that people tend to always have the same handful of tanks that they use. So we need more tanks, but anyways, uh, we're going to be tweaking the champions that we see kind of things uh, being a little off on. Uh, we're going to be adding some new abilities to some of them here and there. Um, I'm really looking forward to the Ashara changes that I've seen in development. Um, at the same time, we are looking at doing some more significant changes or reworks uh, for uh, Delana, for Minsk, for Jarlaxle, and for Jamila. Uh, now, uh, uh, Minsk and Jamila, um, uh, we're a little bit later into it. Like, uh, Delana and Jarlaxle, we knew we wanted to rework a while ago because it's just like we could see, you know, we have a lot to live up to with the, the, the lore of those characters and, you know, their... Their, their legacy, like how powerful they're supposed to be. Um, and same thing with Minsk and, and Jamila as well, but um, they're a little less broken. So, uh, you know, we're definitely focused on that. Uh, but yeah, we want specializations to be more balanced. We want there to be a choice, right? So, uh, uh, Bladed Dragon, that's that's kind of how we're approaching it. Uh, are we planning on adding multi-classes to characters that, that couldn't have them because of interface constraints, if the interface were to be updated? Uh, Maybe, um, maybe that's kind of where I'll leave that. 
Uh, Adam, are you using an Xbox controller while playing the game on PC? I am. I'm using this here fancy white Xbox One controller because uh, I just I like the feel of it the best. Um, yeah, 360 controllers are nice, um, but uh, I prefer that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, any future plans to also give gem costs to familiars you can only obtain by spending money? Uh, probably unlikely, uh, unless we, yeah, it's, that's probably unlikely. Uh, yeah. Uh, Legendary Dragon. Is there anything you might do to make characters like Celeste stronger? Um, I don't think at this point, um, uh, uh, Celeste becoming more powerful is something that we're looking at doing. She's already kind of an auto-include in so many formations. And for most people, like, you know, if you're using Black Viper, maybe uh, Regis is better. But for a lot of players, Celeste is categorically the best one in that slot. So we're not looking at buffing her relative to other characters in that slot. Uh, what we're looking at is making the choice between uh, her two different specializations matter more and something where you might consider one or the other, depending on the circumstance. Um, and yeah, once we get to the year one update, we'll look at characters like uh, Regis and the rest of the companions of the hall as well. Uh, Kat Garion, are you planning on making some of the visuals a bit more clear, such as which champion killed or did the most damage against the creature they attacked? Um, it's an interesting question. Uh, so what I assume you're uh, referring to is like, actually, I don't want to assume what you're referring to. Uh, Kat Garion, can you elaborate on that a little bit just so that I don't totally unanswer or, or misanswer your question? Uh, Queen Lily 272, what is the lore behind Naeli? That's a great question. Uh, Naeli Goldflower is actually on the cover to the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Um, it's one of the one of the characters standing there with uh, uh, Makos and uh, uh, I think it's like Skip Brickard is the name of the like the halfling fighter there and then there's uh, 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 Hitch uh, as a rogue and, uh, and finally the last one is oh, it's like Illyria Moonbow or something the name of the, the like the pale elf that's on the cover uh, and so as far as I know that's where Naeli came from first um, she probably has more history beyond that in like some other uh, Wizards of the Coast thing, but that's that's what I know. Uh, Garawar, first impression of the Google controller. I haven't seen it yet, Garawar. Um, I'm just gonna, okay. Google patented a video game controller when no one was looking. I'm clicking on the link. Uh, it's unremarkable. Yeah, I mean, it's aesthetically, it's kind of ugly. And uh, it looks like they looked at a blueprint of how to make a controller based on everybody else's designs of them and did almost the exact same thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm underwhelmed, Garwar. Uh, all right, El Sandy Man. Uh, how long do you think it will take for me to remember to hold left click instead of clicking like a madman? Oh, that's a, you know, I don't think it'll actually take that long. I think you'll do it a handful of times and uh, yeah, it'll uh, uh, it'll just click in. But certainly it'll take a little bit. I mean, that muscle memory, right? You get used to doing stuff a certain way. Uh, is it easier using the controller than the mouse? Um, I mean, that really depends on what you prefer. Uh, I am so used to using the mouse because I tend to leave the game open on my second screen or like, you know, tabbed out. Uh, on my desktop uh, but when I'm on stream I prefer to use the the gamepad both for two reasons one because it's a it's the newer shinier interface and I think it just looks better on stream even though I'm cropping a chunk of it out with stuff uh, but also because it, it forces me to make sure that I continue to stay on top of knowing how to use a controller to play because uh, otherwise I wouldn't know um, are all, all of my levels are maxed, aren't they? Yeah. Is there a return all familiars button in here? I'm so used to that holding down F and placing all of the things. So yeah, I guess I really am used to the keyboard. 
uh, interface. Drop fire. <laughs> that rat is dead. All right, so. Uh, the wording of Naeli's ultimate says it's like an AoE ultimate, but it's actually a single target attack. Any words on that? Um, I mean, that's, is that really a question, Fiery Crystal? Uh, let me just double check the wording of Naeli's ultimate, because I haven't looked at this wording. Uh, oh, no. I think the best way to look at that is down here. Where is this? Why does it not show up on here? I don't think I can actually get massive damage to a random enemy and stuns all enemies. No, that's that's exactly right. Nelly hits one person really hard and everybody gets stunned. That's yeah. Seems right on the money for me. Uh, alrighty, next. Uh, giant dwarf. Can we call Kron to fight our wizards since that's basically the same difference for an eldritch knight? Um, now that's that's a great point because we don't have uh, subclass information for everybody on their character screens. Um, because quite frankly, for some of them, we don't have subclass information. Uh, but for others, you know, we've included it in their bio somewhere. So, um, while I don't think we're going to call Kron to fight our wizard, uh, Giant Dwarf, I think that's a great note to include uh, for the devs for whenever we get around to doing the character screen. Oh, God, something in my eye. All right. Uh, let's see. Will we be able to switch slots? Okay, Dark One. Uh, are you are you are you referring to like moving champions from one slot to another? Like I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, uh, Vaniel X. I'd like the AOE healers to include themselves in the heal so that they can keep themselves alive so they can continue to heal the, the tank. Um, noted. Um, I'm just happy that healing actually matters in the game uh, more now than it used to. And uh, uh, and tanking actually matters more, uh, so. But that's a that's a good note for uh, the devs. I can pass along. Uh, wow, it's two fifty already. Okay. And uh, well, I'm not at my wall yet, but I'm getting there. Oh man! So if I seem tired, uh, uh, it's because I don't adjust the time changes super good, and uh, I had a like a moment on was it Tuesday night? I just did not sleep. I just just like couldn't go to sleep when I was in bed and then like tried to wake up early and it was all mangled and just slept poorly and it's just like kind of adjusting the time change because I'm one of those people who sucks at adjusting the time changes usually and uh, I'm still kind of out of it and then like last night I was hoping to catch up on that sleep and uh, forgetting that I you know have my uh, I work with a personal trainer on Thursday mornings uh, because I have a severe spinal injury from a decade ago and I have to work with a trainer uh, otherwise I could mess myself up and uh, it's, but like that's at like 7 a.m. So I had to get up. Uh, uh, yeah, had to get away. Uh, oh man. All right. I'm just going to close that thing. There we go. Uh, does Regis carve Scrimshaw while offline to earn more cash? <laughs> no idea. But why is healing gear given the worst numbers? I'm not sure what that means. Like, are you expecting to have the same kind of like 500, 800, 1,000 percent increase to healing? Because um, like, we don't want healing to become overpowered either. You know, like, like spoiler alert: Calliope's shielding is going to be adjusted uh, with the coming uh, uh, core champion balance update. Because right now, like. As long as she can get that shield up on whomever is in the front row, they can almost effectively tank. I mean, they might get one shot before they take damage and get shielded or whatever, but, like, you know, she her shielding is too good. And so it's getting updated. Um, you know, we want to make roles for characters matter so that the strategy is, you know, there are more constraints on how you can build your formations and put things together. Like, it just, you know... Uh, we can't make healing overpowered either. Like if our healer instantly healed a tank to full every second, um, it would just, it would be too good and you would push that many, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's, 
I know that was a like a rambly non-answer in some ways, but like we don't want healing to become the overpowered thing. So, yeah, um, Tan Grisner. Uh, could we have weekly challenges at Award Gems, like a random variant that stays on only for a few days? Um, Chris has been pushing for a system for the game for quite some time now that is reminiscent of what you're describing. Um, that isn't to say that we're doing that exact thing um, or that any of it's finalized, um, but we agree. Uh, there, you know, there needs to be more stuff like that. Uh, oh yeah, K Dark One. Yes, change uh, champions to different slots. No, no, we don't have any plans right now to move champions to other slots. Although, I mean, I'm not going to say that's never going to happen because, I mean, we address things as we see them, and like it might, some way, d d sometime down the road, make more sense for a character to get moved from one slot to another. But generally, they're balanced around being in that slot, that slot specifically. So, yeah, there are different things that could be done, um, but I don't know if that's something that we we're going to do. Uh, is there a timeline for improvements to the save formation menu and options for save formations? Is that a feature that's in development? Uh, that is something that's on our list of quality of life fixes that we'd like to address. Uh, improving upon the uh, formation save feature and uh, familiars and familiar sa uh, formation saves. So, um, yeah. It, it wasn't in the patch. No, um, lots of stuff didn't make the patch. Uh, and that's, that's really because, like, uh, of how big our team is and how much time we have to do stuff. Uh, you know, and especially, you know, when Peter was putting together the, the, the improved chest opening system that he put in, I mean, he put a lot of time into it, but also like, you know, he did it for Steam and then he did it for Xbox and PlayStation and, you know, like tested it on, uh, uh tablets. And so like, so like the development of it takes that much longer. Um, we got a long list of stuff we would like to do and, uh, uh you know, I've, outright named a number of the things that we would like to look at um, with our, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, with our weekly community Q&As. Uh, I highly recommend that anybody who hasn't already check out the, this week's, this past week's community Q&A uh, that was from Tuesday. I think it's still pinned to the top of the Idle Champions subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash Idle Champions. Um, Justin did the Q&A uh, this time because we knew we had the quality of life update coming out and uh, so players got you know more technical more in the know answers to a lot of things uh including uh spoiler alert the code redemption system coming to all platforms um you know so it's not just something that's coming to console it's coming to tablet it's coming to you know it's coming to everything uh will be backwards compatible with everything so if you have codes saved up they will work for it um yeah um now, codes that have expired won't work, obviously, because like the one in the top right corner of the screen here, uh, you know, it expires one week from today uh, at one o'clock p.m. So it was, it was live for exactly seven days. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's all coming. We're working on it. Uh, we, we do love you guys. We think you're great. And uh, uh, it's time for me to wrap up my show, uh, my show, our show, the show uh, for Thursday, March fourteenth. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us, uh, for watching, for participating. Uh, you guys are the coolest people to ever be cool. Uh, this show exists because of a number of amazing folks behind the scenes, uh, including my co-producers, Erica and Clive, uh, as well as our partners at Dungeons and Dragons, Daryl, Allison, Greg, Bart, Pelham, and Satine. Uh, huge, huge, huge thanks to Matthew Lillard for joining me on stream today to talk about all things uh, Beetle and Grimm and D&D. Uh, please tune in next week uh, where we will have the Bee Stingers on stream to talk about the family business. Uh, Welch's Game Juice is coming up next, uh, followed by uh, Kickstarter's new crowdfunding champions, uh, Critical Role, at 7 p.m. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and thanks for joining me. Thank you.